You may think that all physicists do the same stuff, mucking about in a lab coat and building time machines like Doc Brown, but that's like 60% of us at the outside. The rest of us work in a wide range of subfields of physics, from classic areas like particle physics to newfangled fields like biophysics. This doesn't help us answer the really important questions, though, like which field is the best? Since I have tenure and they can't fire me, I'm going to tell you today in the internet's favorite trope from 2021, the tier list. So our first subfield is condensed matter experiment, or CMX. These are the guys that deal with solid state systems. Think semiconductors and superconductors, transistors and transducers. Basically the boring stuff that electrons do in solids that have a small but finite chance of making you a billionaire. If you see a physicist wearing a suit, it's probably these guys. This is the baseline, so B tier. Condensed matter theory, or CMT. These guys essentially dedicate their lives to understanding all the frankly batshit insane stuff electrons can collectively decide to do by using enough math to dazzle the bewildered experimentalist into believing them because they don't actually want to do all that math themselves. And sometimes their theories actually describe the data, sort of. B tier. Up next is high energy experiment, or HEX. This is a fancy name for experimental particle physics. These are the guys that go to CERN and shoot protons at each other at the Large Hadron Collider, or LHC. They have some cool toys, but lack the sense of humor required to deploy them in fun ways, like attempting to turn Carl into Dr. Manhattan. The experiments are so big that people work on huge teams with hundreds to thousands of PhDs, and everyone gets to work on a tiny part of a big problem. Lots of meetings. Lots of meetings, although sometimes they are in Switzerland, which is probably fun the first couple of times, but they go like four times a year. Probably most depressingly, they haven't found a new particle beyond the standard model, despite about 50 years of effort. So lots of meetings, Europeans telling you what to do, and no new physics in sight. D tier for the most depressing subfield, but at least not an F due to their ability to cut me in half with a particle beam if I give them an F. Next are their compatriots in high energy theory, uh, phenomenologies particularly. These guys work closely with HEX to try to interpret the collider experiments and suggest new potential particles that may be sort of kind of allowed by the laws of physics, which I gather basically means group theory in this context. Tens of thousands of papers published since the Higgs boson was predicted, and at least some of these papers are not yet proven wrong. To be clear, none of them are proven right either. Most of the depressing aspects of HEX, but no one in the right mind would let them near equipment, so no particle beams to worry about. F tier. Our next area is high energy theory, specifically string theory. Do you like math? Do you really, really like math? Did pure math not quite seem esoteric enough for you? Then do I have a field for you. One where you never have to worry about pesky things like experimental results raining on your parade. One where no one laughs you out of the room when you postulate the universe as a hologram on a two-dimensional boundary or that you can jump into a black hole and someone will eventually be able to reconstruct you from its effluent as it slowly evaporates over 10 to the 200 years. Ladies and gentlemen, string theory, D tier, mainly because they get good press, so a strong way to launch a career as a pundit. Next up is Atomic Molecular and Optical Physics, or AMO. Lasers! Lasers! Pew, pew, pew! Take that, Adams! Ha ha! Suck it! You are now ionized ruthenium. So, basically, if you like to build complex machines that sometimes work, lift weights, rock climb, and generally bro out, the AMO lab is the place to be. Sure, they will have a list of everyone's personal record bench press on the whiteboard, but these dudes can turn off the lights and make the lab look like a rave with all their lasers. Fun stuff, not too stressful, decent funding. I'm putting it in A tier. Biophysics. Physicists are a fastidious bunch in general. Not too many weird chemicals or slime molds, except for the biophysicists, who, in the words of a microbiologist I know, measure things we've known for decades in, quote, more elegant ways. To that, I say, so you're saying we're elegant? This field has it all. Smelly bugs, goat brain smoothies, mouse guillotines, brain organelles on cocaine, unlimited interesting problems, and NIH funding. We're probably all going to end up as biophysicists. Easier to just accept it now. S tier. Next is plasma physics. 
This subfield is like riding an angry snake. Magnetic fields and ionized atoms, what could go wrong? Better question, what could go right? Not much, it turns out. C tier. This brings us to quantum information, which is basically condensed matter experiment with better marketing. The U.S. spent like $3 billion last year on quantum sensing, but I still can't get anyone to tell me what the hell makes a sensor quantum. Google Quantum AI keeps poaching my best students with starting salaries higher than my salary. A tier. Next up is nuclear physics. I've heard about these mythical beasts, but I don't think I've ever met one. The Bigfoot of the modern physics department. C tier, mainly since they have polonium and I don't want to annoy them. So there is our tier list. Some of you may be thinking I left out astrophysics, but astronomy is the study of the universe. Since physics happens in the universe, it is clearly a subfield of astronomy. If you want to see the astrophysics tier list, get in the comments. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.